All right, g'day. In this video, we're gonna look at how you can evaluate any psychological study in three simple steps. All right, if you wanna write better essays, if you're trying to become a better psychologist, if you wanna score higher marks in your IB psychology exams or any psychology exam, and you have to evaluate a study, this video is gonna help. First, we'll look at the three steps. I'll try to give you some examples. And at the end of the video, I'll give some tips, uh, especially for teachers, some things I've learned along the way uh, about how to develop critical thinking skills in students. All right, 99% of, of students do these first two steps all the time, and it's fine, but it drives examiners nuts because they miss the third step. So what's the first step to evaluate a study is? Identify the research method. All right, was it a true experiment, natural experiment, a quasi experiment, was it, was it a case study, a survey? Did they use a questionnaire, interviews, observations, correlational study? Now, uh, so the first thing you have to do is identify what was the research method used. Now, when I say research method, in IB psychology, that means very specific things. But generally, I just mean any methodology. How did they gather the data? What did they do to analyze the data? You could even talk about things that aren't typically research methods, but just the methodology, like did they use brain imaging? Did they use um, a questionnaire and then they did a correlational study? Some studies use two methods, right? So there might be a natural experiment and they also conduct a correlational study, or they do interviews and then they correlate that data. It doesn't matter. Just any method methodology that you can identify uh, will help. And that's the first step. Now the second step is figure out what are the general limitations of that particular methodology. Now evaluation typically means strengths and limitations, so you can focus on the strengths as well. But just to make it easier, let's just focus on the limitations in this video. So what are the general limitations of a true experiment or a laboratory experiment, for example? Now the classic one is ecological validity. It's in a lab, does it have ecological validity, right? Um, a correlational study, correlation is not causation. Case study, invariably they have a very small sample size. Uh, questionnaires or surveys, they offer Often rely on self-report data which might not be reliable. Now in the link uh, in the description I've got a blog post where I, I, I put all these down and write them down so you can refer back to them later. But the, the second step is figure out the general limitation of, uh, of a particular methodology that uh, your study that you're trying to evaluate uses. Now like I said, 99% of IB psychology kids and students writing exams do those first two steps. They'll say something like, this was a true experiment, so it lacks ecological validity. This was a correlational study, so we can't uh, deduce a causal uh, relationship, or correlation does not mean causation. This was a case study, so it lacks population validity. Right Now, you, you might score a mark if you're lucky. This third step is the most important. And this is what's gonna separate your answers from the rest. This is what's gonna take time, and this is where the critical thinking comes in. You have to apply that general limitation to your particular study. So if you're using, say, a true, a true experiment, and you're saying it might like ecological validity, you have to explain why. What is different about the, the lab environment to a particular real life environment you're trying to apply to? Now, I've got another video where I explain how to uh, explain ecological validity properly. I'll link somewhere you can click it. Uh, case study, right? It might not be generalizable to a different population. Why? Why not? Pick a different population and explain why. Self-report data, if it's a questionnaire or a survey and you're saying, well, people might not be honest or reliable, their answers might, um, might be inaccurate. Why? Right? Is it something like, uh, maybe it's a survey on eating disorders, and so why might people not be honest about that? Or maybe it's a survey questionnaires about marriage and marital satisfaction. Why, not be, why would people not be 100% uh, accurate about that, right? about that particular topic? You have to be specific. You have to link the limitation to your specific study. That shows you've really thought carefully about it. Uh, if it's a correlational study, right? So you might say, well, there's bidirectional ambiguity. How? Why? It might A might affect B, but B might affect A. Why? Develop it. Or maybe there's a third variable that explains that relationship. You have to apply it to your particular example. Now, I'm going to write a series of blog posts and might even make more videos breaking down each particular research method and how we can evaluate it. But I'd say for now, that's a good place to begin. All right, so to recap. Three steps. One, identify the research method or any methodology employed by the study. Two, figure out the general uh, limitations of that particular methodology. And third, most importantly, apply it to your particular study. Now, if you're a teacher watching this and you want some ideas, you could spend a whole hour just getting students to pick a study and going through those three simple steps. And hopefully by the end, they can bring to you a paragraph where they've got you know, one paragraph of evaluation. Another tip for teachers is,
I used to try to evaluate every study throughout the course. I thought that would be how I developed critical thinking. They had to do that. They had to be able to evaluate every single study we ever taught. And then I've stopped doing that. In fact, I don't really get into um, whole class evaluations of studies until probably the second year of my course. Now, I'm lucky that I can teach it over two years. Why not? Well, I use evaluations of studies as, a, as an extension, as a fast finisher. Because in order to evaluate the study, you have to know the topic. You have to understand the topic. You also have to know and remember the study. Now, those things in the themselves take a long time and we have very limited time in IB psychology and also um, for students you know that takes a little bit of time as well and not every student is going to get to the point where you know they fully understand the topic they can explain it describe it and they can explain what the study means to begin with uh, and then go on to evaluate it in fact a, the, the most common weakness in IB psychology essays and even short answer responses is students don't explain the results of the study what do the studies show so what and that's really important. You can't get to the evaluation and say the lim limitations of that application until you have the application. So this is why I, I wait till later in the course to evaluate the studies. Another reason I don't evaluate as we go along is because critical thinking should be transferable. Right? The, the critical thinking skills should be um, independent and, and transferable. So students should be able to, and we can teach them in scaffold and guide students towards evaluating a study, but then they need to be able to do it by themselves. So what I'm hoping is when they come to review for their exams, they're not gonna, my students aren't going to use every study we've ever taught in the course. We've, I've probably taught maybe 70 studies, and they might use 30 or 40. So they're gonna cut it down by half and figure out which, which topics, which examples they want to use. And then that's when they're gonna to try to come up with their own evaluations. Remember, critical thinking isn't just remembering someone else's critique and someone else's evaluation. It's about coming up with your own evaluation. Now, on that note, why is critical thinking and evaluation so difficult? Well, we don't have, ask students to do it in any other subject, right? English. We don't ask students to evaluate Shakespeare's use of iambic pentameter. We don't, use, we don't ask them to evaluate Arthur Miller's um, stage directions. We, we trust that they were the experts and they knew what they were doing. So we just try to understand why. In psychology, it's kind of odd that we ask these students to evaluate these studies. Now, these studies have been peer-reviewed. They've been designed by, by trained professionals. And we're expecting 17, 18-year-old amateur psychologists to come up with the limitations in their methodology or their application. It's quite bizarre. So we have to have a little bit of leeway here, right? Now, it's the same thing with theories. Students aren't going to independently come up with a, um, a, a limitation of social identity theory by themselves. I mean, it's very, very tricky to have a, 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 a unique um, independent critique that isn't just someone else's because there's a reason we're teaching these theories is they're really good. There's a reason we're teaching these studies is they're very good. Um, if, they, if they had obvious flaws and limitations, we probably wouldn't have them in our textbooks and in our course. That aside, this is why I would say when evaluating studies, focus the, the strengths comes from the internal validity because they're very usually very tightly controlled, well-designed experiments. So focus on the internal validity for strengths and then the external validity applications, generalizability um, for the limitations. Uh, there are some, some exceptions to that. So for example, correlational studies or if you're looking at self-report data. But I think we do have to be uh, a little bit um, a little bit understanding about that and, and, and this evaluation evaluating studies is very tricky. So I think it's important, we, it's a skill we want to um, get to at the end, but I think there are other things that we can focus on more, like understanding the topics and being able to have good explanations of behaviors, describing studies, explaining studies, and then we use evaluating studies as a critical thinking extension. Right, I hope that helped. Three simple steps to evaluate any study, identify the methodology, Limit, general limitations of that methodology and then finally apply that limitation and explain how it's relevant to your particular study. All right, uh, if that was helpful, please leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz, um, and thanks. See you next time.